Hi everyone, my name is Roman Lewis, and in this video I'm going to be building this. It's a hall table for a client here in Townsville, and it's also the first time that I'm trying whitewashing. This is the timber that I'm going to be using. This is Vic Ash, and it's important to note that this is dimensional number. So it's 35 mil by 140. The reason I mention that is you've got a good chance of being able to get timber this size pretty much anywhere you are. As much as this is dimensional lumber, it's still a good idea, if you can, to run it over a jointer, especially if you're going to be gluing edges. So with all of the edges cleaned up, I could add some glue and get them into clamps. The top panel was a little bit too wide so after the glue up I had to come back trim off a little bit and that way I could fit it through my thicknesser. This was maxing out at 330 millimeters wide. And then finally everything went through my drum sander at 80 grit to bring it all to the same thickness. So with all the milling done I could start work on the joinery, it's fairly simple in this project. You notice I'm adding a zero clearance fence here for my miter saw, made a huge difference. I'm gonna start doing this more often. So with everything milled, I now need to take the rail, which is gonna sit like that, and join a leg, which is gonna sit like that. So to make the connection between the rail and this leg, I'm gonna be using dowels, 10 millimeter dowels to be precise. You'll see me clamping on this board here, and this is a guide. As I bring the rail piece down to leave an imprint with these sensor points, this is just going to guide it into place. These points only work if there's one mark, so if you're moving it around trying to find the position, they really, <laughs> they just don't work. I've done a couple of test fits and this is the line that's going to be the top of the leg assembly. So the, the top is going to sit on here. Now I've got the difficult task for me where I have to cut this 10 degree angle through 270 mil worth of leg. If I had a table saw, this cut would be no problem. Tilt the blade 10 degrees, run it through, bingo, bango, done. But I don't have one. So I'm going to have to come up with a different method. I was thinking of doing a handsaw, but I don't really trust myself with that. So what I'm gonna try is using the bandsaw. I'll tilt the table to 10 degrees, run it through close to the line, and then come back with a block plane and get it down to the line. Woo! That went way better than expected. Oh man, I am so impressed with how it's turned out. It's gonna take so little cleanup with the block plane, it's amazing. But in the end, the cut was so clean, I could just skip the block plane and go straight to this belt sander. I set it to 10 degrees and got all of the angles done. Next up was the top. I measured it to length and then cut it down using a circular saw. And yes, I'm sure you're asking yourself, well, why didn't you just use the circular saw for that 10 degree cut? And that, my friends, is because this is the world's worst circular saw and it has the worst blade tilt system I've ever used. So that's set to 90 degrees and I'm never making the mistake of changing that again. So up until now, I think this project's been fairly straightforward, the process, but this next step is something that I haven't tried before, and that's lime washing this timber. I got this from my friends up the road at Studio Double. They were very helpful um, and suggested this product. The idea is to simply paint this on as a paint, but you just paint it on fairly lightly, and then it looks like a lime washed uh, board. So it's as simple as that. I've done some tests and it, and it turned out quite well. And I'm gonna start by doing the inside panels first and the rail. So I'll get this painted up and then I will glue that together. Once that's all set up, then I'll go back over and do the rest of the piece. After the paint had dried, I came back with a matte water-based polyurethane, two coats of that, and I got to the sheen level that I wanted. It still looked very natural. 
This is the first time that I'm using epoxy for a glue up. I would normally just use a regular PVA wood glue. I was going with this mostly for the long open time, but also because a couple of these holes that I drilled for the dowels were a little bit loose. So the epoxy just helps to fill those gaps. You'll notice I've used tape around all of the edges. Because this is epoxy, the cleanup's a little bit more tricky, and this really came in handy. At this stage, everything was going pretty well, and then it stopped going well. All right, I didn't film that, I know, I apologize, but this has probably been one of the biggest cock-ups <laughs> in my woodworking career, and I'll show you why. You can see the angle of that leg at 10 degrees. I had some 10 degree blocks on either side to clamp it to that end. But as I squeezed down on the clamps, it just pushed those blocks up against that which i hadn't anticipated so uh, yeah that's kind of why i stopped filming because there were a lot of nasty words and um <laughs> it didn't go so well but i got there in the end um it seems to be holding and all the gaps have closed up so fingers crossed first time with epoxy man i hope this works so with the leg assembly and clamps i could move on to whitewashing the top and you'll notice the process here is slightly different each time i was just trying to improve on it and end up with a better result I've got it out the clamps. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I put a couple of extra dowels in either end, essentially toe nailing them into these side panels just for a little extra support. Might be overkill, but being my first time with epoxy, I wanted to make sure. When I lined up these dowels, I purposefully kept this long rail slightly raised above these two side panels. That way I could bring this down to be perfectly flush with these. So with all the parts finished and dried, I could find where I wanted that leg assembly on the top and then lock that in place with a couple of blocks and clamps. Then I could pull the leg assembly out and get ready to drill for some dowels. While I'm working on the glue up, I thought I should probably address how white this whitewashed wood is. It's very subtle, but I did do a bit of back and forth with the clients and the idea was to keep the wood tone while still having the whitewashed look. Personally, I like it, but I'm pretty sure it's not gonna to be to everyone's taste. Okay, so I've got the two outside faces and these edges to paint next, stain. I'm gonna be trying something slightly different with this, and that's using a roller to get the paint on. What I'm finding is getting the paint on and then wiping it off with a rag actually leaves a pretty nice finish. I can then go over it with a brush to add the lines back in, but it's about getting that bulk paint on. So we'll see how this goes. And that was it, a fairly straightforward project with a cool design and a process with the whitewashing that I'd never tried before. So thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you wanna see more of this content, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe. My name is Robin Lewis. Take care everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.